So learning to code does not come naturally for most people. For me, it certainly did not. I still remember the first time I was learning to code and I was doing my first basic Python course. And in that course, there was one assignment, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it frustrated me because it was basically requiring me to build something that they had not yet taught how to build in that course up until that point. And I just could not understand, like, isn't that the point of the course to like teach me exactly what to do so that then I can do it? Why was I being asked to do something that they had not explicitly told us how to do? But it was not until much later that I realized that this was in fact the exact right way for this course to essentially force myself to learn how to code. And I will come back to and expand on this idea sort of throughout this video. But first, why should you listen to me? Well, a few years ago, I learned to code and landed a real software engineer job in just four months from writing my first line of code. I have been a software developer for two years and even built my own tech startup and I have helped many other people do the same thing as I did, which is to become a software developer with no previous experience and no computer science degree. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you the biggest mistake that beginners make when they're learning to code that keeps them stuck forever. The one key mindset shift that is really required for any aspiring programmer that wants to actually succeed with learning to code and how I managed to essentially brute force my brain to learn to code. So when you're learning to code, there are sort of two stages that you need to go through, where stage two is actually the most important one and also the most misunderstood one. And both of these stages require to learn in slightly different ways. So everything starts with just learning the basics of programming. And if you don't know how to do that, I will give you some options in a moment. And that is stage one. And then after that, whether you are a genius or a complete dumbass, you will need to go through what I call the brute force learning stage, where the way you make progress changes significantly from stage one. After you have learned the basics of how the French language works, like the basic vocabulary, the basic grammar, and sort of how the language is structured, which you can learn like the way you would learn at school, by just studying it. The second stage is where you actually become fluent in actually understanding and actually speaking French without having to think about it. And if you have ever tried to learn a language, you probably know that this is also something that most people never achieve because most people don't understand how to get from this basic understanding to this fluency. And the way you do that with programming is exactly the same way as you do with a human language. I will talk about how to do that in just a second. But before that, let's talk about how you can actually learn the basics. So in the case of programming, this will simply mean getting to the stage where you understand how variables work, what loops are, how the logic of a program generally works, what even is a program, these kinds of things. And so to learn the basics of a programming language like JavaScript, let's take that as an example, here are some of the basics that you will need to learn. You will need to learn data types, variables and operators, control flow, object oriented programming, functions, scope and data structures. After you have learned all of these foundations and you can go through that list and understand what these things mean, that means you have more the basics. And if you're looking for a free and straightforward way to master these basics right now, I will leave below a completely free introduction to JavaScript guide from HubSpot that will teach you all of this in a very understandable way so you can just follow the guide step by step. The guide will start by explaining to you what JavaScript is, including why this language is so popular and why you should use it. Then it will teach you the foundations of JavaScript programming concepts like data types, variables, operators, functions, and control flow and a lot more. Then it will move on to some more intermediate yet still essential concepts like object-oriented programming, which will teach you about things like classes and objects, which is some of the most common concepts that you will face as a programmer throughout your career, as well as data structures. And my favorite part about this guide is that it explains all of these concepts very, very simply, in a way that even my grandma could understand it. The mistake that so many courses and tutorials make is that they make these things way too complicated. HubSpot have managed to make this resource comprehensive, easy to understand, and succinct all at the same time. This resource was made by HubSpot, who are also sponsoring this video, and I will leave the free download link down below for you to access this resource. Thanks for HubSpot for sponsoring this video and making this resource available for us. Now, the way you learn these basics is by simply studying, like in the way that you probably intuitively started to learn to code anyway, by just sort of mechanically learning what variables and functions and all of these things mean, because you need to have these sort of core foundations in your brain before you can actually start using them. But the way you keep learning is not the same. And this is where the core mistake that every beginner programmer makes comes in that keeps keeps almost everyone stuck unless you learn to stop making this mistake. Now, going back to our analogy of learning French, if you've ever tried to learn a human language, you will know that at some point, if you just keep trying to study more of the language, like memorize more grammar concepts, you will know that at some stage, you will simply get stuck. And no matter how much more you study, anytime you need to actually speak French, 
you just end up freezing and magically all of this studying has just evaporated from your brain. Now, the way you actually become fluent in a language is to use the language by reading, by listening, by speaking, just using the language as much as possible in real world context. Like for example, listening to audiobooks at first at a very slow speed in that language until I became comfortable and then doing a bit more difficult things, etc, etc. And it is the exact same thing with programming. The reason you're stuck with programming and why you cannot seem to get fluent with programming to the point where you can actually build anything you want without thinking about it is that you keep trying to study programming rather than actually using programming. Because it's only when you use programming that your brain actually understands how to instinctively use these things rather than having to think about it every time. So beyond the basics, what you need to start doing is start to use programming as much as possible by building projects and solving problems. And yes, this is going to be a stage where you're going to be very, very uncomfortable. You're going to try to build something and you're going to have no idea what to do. But this is absolutely normal and this is what's supposed to happen. And this leads us to the key mindset shift that totally changed my life when it came to learning to code. Now, 99% of people view learning coding as like learning a topic at school, like learning biology. And the way you learn at school works well for certain things, like the kind of topic like history or biology where you need to learn information but it does not work well for learning skills programming is not a topic it's not a subject it's a skill you're trying to learn how to use this skill to actually do something practical let's look at how you would learn how to build muscle or learn the skill of lifting more weights you wouldn't do that by simply reading more books or watching more videos about the technique of how to do a bench press now you would do that in the beginning to understand how to do it properly, but you wouldn't expect that your muscle would grow by simply looking at someone else lift weights. You would do that by actually going to the gym and employing something called progressive overload, where you lift whatever you can, and then next time you try to lift a bit more, the next time you like to try to lift a bit more again. And through this process, because you keep putting your muscle in its zone of discomfort, slowly but surely, it will keep growing, and the amount that you can lift slowly but surely keeps going up. Now, with learning a skill like coding, it is the same thing. Now, from the previous step, you might have now correctly picked up a project that you're going to build. You might have built a project and feel really, really good about yourself. So next, what you might do is simply pick another project to build that is at the same difficulty level as the last one. But if you keep doing this, you will get somewhat good, but you won't actually keep improving. Because on top of just building things with your coding skills, you need to also apply the principle of progressive overload like you would do with training at the gym, which is that you need to keep building projects that are at an increasing level of difficulty. Because once you get comfortable with building one difficulty level of project with some coding skills, you now know those skills. And if you want to keep learning more, you need to add something more to your projects that you haven't done before. But this is exactly what is needed to actually make progress. And this is how you learn any skill. You don't learn it by studying it, you learn it by doing it, but also doing it with progressive overload, with increasing difficulty. And again, this is by definition going to be tough because by definition, you're putting yourself and your brain in situations that it has not faced before. But this is exactly this discomfort that is required for growth in any area of your life. So if you're worried that you're just not smart enough to keep improving your skills and things like that, here's how you can just force your brain to learn to code no matter your level of intelligence. So when you face a problem that you cannot solve or you're trying to build something and you just cannot figure out how to do it, the simple trick is that you simply keep trying to solve it until you either succeed or you die. Like you just don't give up no matter what. The way you learn to code is that you should always be trying to do things that you haven't done before. Trying to do things that you don't know how to do. By definition, that is what you should be doing. So the only thing that can stop you from actually accomplishing those things and building those things and therefore learning is if you quit, if you stop. And sadly, for 90% of people, this is exactly what they do. When things get hard, they simply quit. So if you simply don't quit and you simply keep trying for long enough time, eventually you will succeed because it's not like these things are impossible. So how do you actually do that practically? By two things. Number one, google.com and number two, ChatGPT. Any question you have in your brain of, oh, how do I solve this problem? How do I build an API with Flask? All of those things you can just ask from google.com and ChatGPT. They will give you code eventually if you just keep looking for it and then you can just look at it and understand it and voila, now you have done the thing and you can move on to the next thing. Again, the only thing that can stop you here is you. As in, if you choose to give up. And the way you brute force your brain and how I brute force my brain to learn the code is that I simply chose to never stop 
trying. But nevertheless, despite all of this, if you're still thinking that coding is just too hard, or perhaps you're thinking that coding is not worth it anymore. It's not worth it to learn to code with AI and all these things that are coming up. I actually made this video exactly for you to address those concerns. So before you give up, at least watch this video and hear me out. And then if you still wanna give up, go ahead and do it. But watch this video next, and I'll see you in the next one.